We are at the end of 2022. Everyone is starting to do their annual year end list. Here we go. We're going to start off with the classics as usual. This is going to be for my all the superhero movies I had the pleasure of watching in 2022. Now, originally, this was going to contain all of the superhero movies and shows that I watched in 2022, but I just decided there are 16 of these movies. Two of them are shorts, a few of them are directed video movies, one of them is based on a video game property, but I decided not to include the TV shows. All 2022, all 16 superhero movies I saw ranked from the least favorite to my favorite. So, if you guys are new to the channel, if you're seeing on the screen or in the description box, even though this is a pre-recorded video, all my social media links are description box down below to my Facebook, all the way up to my serialized. Be sure to use my commission to get yourself a free movie palette of your choice. And if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, and share for more of my year-end videos. Still have quite a couple movies from 2022 to talk about, but there's going to be a channel update discussing that part of such very soon. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start off this ranking for my favorite superhero movies of 2022. So with that being said, let's get started and let's and let's see how how this is gonna go. Now before I go any further, I just want to say this is my personal list. So if you don't like the choices in here, please don't get angry. This is all my opinion. Maybe there's one movie you like that I have a little lower, a movie you hate that I have a higher. But that's just how this goes. Now, as far as 2022 superhero movies, not as strong as it was going to be, considering the many delays with Shazam 2 and Spider-Verse 2 and The Flash and Aquaman 2 and such, but... We did get some good enough stuff. Some is very up and down in terms of how I feel about these movies. But here we go. This is my list. And obviously, I do have the list right here. So we're going to get started. This is the only comic book movie that pissed me off this year. And that was Morbius. Ah, uh, Sony, you and your stupid studio interference. What have you done? Now, to be fair, I went into this optimistic. Even with all the drama, all of the production delays, and some of the behind the scenes problems that went on, as far as the studio meddling goes, I still gave this movie a chance. And unfortunately, even sleeping on this and months after this, Morbius, this movie is one of the worst comic book movies I've ever seen in my life, and it is one of my least favorite movies of 2022. Now, but you wouldn't listen. Why, you stupid fuck? Look at you now. Which you will see that list a little soon. Luckily, there's only seven. Morbius, this is a movie that had. A lot of potential. You're taking a low tier character like Morbius and making him into something in his first movie. And with someone like Jared Leto and with a decent director, Daniel Espinosa, who's done stuff like Safe House and Life. There should be no reason as to why this movie is the way it is because everything from the editing the story structure, even to the effects are terrible. You can tell that this was only made for Sony to studio interference. And this movie also has some of the worst post credit scenes I've ever seen in my life. You maniac! You blew it up! Oh, damn you! God damn you all! 
even though I like Michael Keaton in them, is only an excuse to try and connect this to the MCU, and it's just not happening at this point. Also, not to mention, you have one of the worst fucking villains of the year in Matt Smith. I like Matt Smith as an actor. Last Night in Soho, his era of Doctor Who with Karen Gillan was really good. But this is not definitely not your strongest calling. He's unintentionally fun. If this movie was more self-aware of being so bad it was ridiculous, then maybe his performance would fit more in a better movie. But unfortunately, all of the problems that this movie has shows exactly why this is the worst movie of 2022. Jared Leto tries, Audrey Arjona tries, I think the score is fine. A lot of actors in this movie get very underutilized. Jared Harris, Tyrese Gibson, Ah Madrigal, and the biggest elephant in the room. The PG-13 definitely hurts this movie because with a vampire like this, you should be a little bit more bloodier, a little bit more gorier. And with a character like this, this should have been a confliction story about a man who has this cure with vampirism and he has to decide does he want to drink blood or not. And unfortunately, this is the not that. Again, a lot of studio interference with Sony, definitely one of the worst movies of 2022, and it is my least favorite comic book movie of the year. And if you do, if you can't do a villain movie with having at least one Spider-Man in Peter or Miles or a different version of Peter or Gwen Stacy or Spider-Man, but anyways, Morbius number 16, that's where you're going, that's what you get. You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Coming in 15th place is going to be Marvel's Thor Love and Thunder. Oh, phase four. Phase four. You have been a rocky road. You started off real good with WandaVision. Then you had a bump in the roads with Black Widow and Eternals, which really frustrates me the more I think about it, to the point where I kind of hate it. Bitch, you better be joking. Then you read your TV shows, Moon Knight was aight, and Hawkeye, I'm growing a little bit more appreciation for it, despite all my issues, especially with Kate Bishop, but we'll see what they do with her Phase 5. Thor Love and Thunder, a movie I was really looking forward to. I have grown to appreciate Thor Ragnarok. I think is a very good movie. It's not the best MCU movie ever. It's definitely not my favorite Thor movie, but I do think it is a very good movie. This one was looking forward to it. You had Christian Bale coming in. You had Natalie Portman coming back. And unfortunately, this is a prime example of why you don't let Taika Waititi write his own superhero movies. Because this is basically comedy over this actual story this is a waste of potential that's right you should think long and hard about what you did there's good things in her i think the chemistry between chris Hemsworth and natalie portman is still great as it was in the first two thor movies it's visually looking especially some good effects at times Beautiful cinematography and production design. Christian Bale, he's awesome in this movie, even though I wish he was in this movie more. The little cameo by the Guardians of the Galaxy, I thought they did a little fine job for what they had to do. What this movie falls down to is the tonal clashes and Taika Waititi himself. And when you see interviews of how egotistical he is, you can tell this was not made by a fan of the first three Thor movies. You can tell that Taika Waititi's ego gets in the way because there is a lot of decisions he makes in this movie that are just not happy. I don't have a problem with Jane dying. That's in the comics. My biggest issues is the comedy gets so overbearing to the point where I feel like this should just been a straight up serious movie with some comedy here. I'm not saying Marvel needs to to be devoid of comedy but when the comedy is one of your biggest problems with a few of your movies something has got to change Stop it! and the writing in this movie especially on Taika Waititi's part 
It kills me with some of the humor. Screaming goats annoys the hell out of me. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! A lot of actors in this movie get underutilized. Valkyrie gets underused. Lady Sif gets underused again for the third time in a row. You done fucked it up! Do something with the character or just kill her off in the last Thor movie. And also, Thor is kind of a complete joke in this movie. Despite Chris Hemsworth's best efforts, I just want to see Thor go back to the Thor that he was. So, while I don't hate this as much as other people do, I definitely don't enjoy this as much as I want to. It's definitely not going to be on my best movies of the year. Because of all the problems I have with this movie, the movie takes itself way too comedically seriously. It, will, it tries way too hard. And also, if you were going to have a... You could, and this should have been more of a serious entry. Especially with a god killing god and with Jane having cancer. I don't hate this movie. I just was at the end of the day pretty frustrated with this. Yeah, well... You know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. Number 14 is gonna be Constantine, the House of Mystery. This was a pretty decent one. I, I, I like this one. I didn't hate it. It was, it's a short animated, DC animated film that I actually quite enjoyed. And it wasn't so bad. I am a fan of the Constantine character. I think he can be interesting, especially in live action. I wanted a few who actually really likes the 2005 movie. But this was actually not too bad of a film. I thought it had some good moments to it. I liked the performances. The voice acting was good. The animation was strong. And I liked the idea of the house of mystery in here. And it is rated R. It definitely gives you that Constantine vibe for it. Unfortunately, my biggest problem here, just like a few of these other ones here, is that I do feel like this is a little bit too short for an anime DC movie. And don't get me wrong, a lot, mo most movies and shows are too long nowadays, most movies and shows can be too short. It's just a matter of picking your battles and determining which one is right for you. But, it was still a pretty entertaining little animated DC Universe movie in the DC Animated Universe new era that was actually pretty decent. Not great, but I thought it was pretty decent. Like I said, some characters get underutilized, and I will say I think the movie could have been a little bit longer for an animated film, but I definitely did enjoy watching this movie. Number 13 is gonna be Super the Battle of the Super Sons, Batman and Superman. This, I had no anticipation for this. This was just like, why are you doing this? You're pretty much the same films I had with Superman and Lois when they announced they were going to have their kids on the show. I'm like, this is stupid. But I, it had the heart. His tone was in the right place. I liked Jack Dylan Grazer and the other voice actor who voices Superman and Batman's sons. You get to see Laura Bailey, Travis Willingham in here. I liked the inclusions of Batman and Superman and their kids. The animation was good. I thought the villain was fine. Only issue, again, is that it's a little bit too short. And that is... Pretty much my only issue when it comes to this. And there were a few characters here that didn't really quite work for me. But other than that, I thought it was entertaining enough to watch. And I thought it was very interesting as a movie. And so, it was actually a pretty solid movie. Number 12. This one is going to be a little controversy. Black Adam. I do not get this most of the hate this movie got. I, yes, this movie is a box office bomb, kind of. And unfortunately, we probably may or may not see more of The Rock as Black Adam because there is a new era with James Gunn, and a lot of people are getting pissy over it. I like James Gunn as a filmmaker. I want to see what he's going to do with the new era of DCEU. But... 
Black Adam, it, for the only time we would probably see Black Adam, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was awesome. I did enjoy myself with it. The Rock was very good as being a villain. He's very passionate about this role for 15 years. I liked Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fay. I liked some of the story elements that they were doing here. Cyclone was pretty good. I liked Quintessa Swindell. She was great. Adam Smasher was one of my favorite characters in the movie. He, he has the whole Deadpool vibe to him. Hawkman stole the show. I loved Hawkman. And I really do hope in this new era of DC we do get to see more see him somehow in James Gunn's plans. Even though there's some changes in what's about to happen, I do want to see if the, we're going to get more of Hawkman, Hawkgirl, or maybe it's... Again, issues, the villain wasn't that great. The script could have been better. Of course, the movie needs to be at least 15 minutes or 20 minutes longer. Sarah Shahi, she was very good, but I wish she had a little more to do. And the post credit scene, while it was cool, unfortunately, it is not going to lead into anything. So, it is kind of a bummer. But, for this one time, we'll probably see Black Adam... And because The Rock doesn't want a cameo in Shazam 2, even though he's a Shazam villain. I thought Black Adam was pretty solid. Not amazing, but not one of the worst of the year. Coming in 11th place is going to be Green Lantern, Beware of My Power. It's good to see Green Lantern. Oh my god, you have no idea how much I think Green Lantern is a pretty underrated DC character. And he has been having to run around ever since that 2011 cinematic abomination. I never want to talk about that again. Green Lantern, Beware of My Power, we follow Hal Jordan. And we have some other characters in this movie. You have Hawk Girl, and then you have the Green Arrow, and Sinestro. And I like the more cosmic side of this. It's not my favorite Green Lantern movie. That still goes to Green Lantern Emerald Knights. You have Leara and all those characters there. But I thoroughly really enjoyed Green Lantern and Beware My Power. I thought the voice acting was awesome. Aldous Hodge was great. I loved the voice acting for Green Arrow and Hot Girl. She was badass. You had another great female character in there that was badass. Sinestro was a little underused. I do feel like for an origin with this character of this version of Green Lantern being Jon Stewart, I do wish it was a little longer. And I will say there's maybe one or two moments here that kind of bored me. And Sinestro could have been a little bit more. But overall, I thought that this was awesome, and I would love to see what James Gunn is going to do with the Green Lanterns in his world of DC. And I'm curious to see what plans are going to be for Green Lantern in the future, because damn it, I want to see Green Lantern get some play. Coming in number 10 is going to be the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. This is only a special, but I want to include it so... I will say that this was a nice little breather, and you get to see the Guardians of the Galaxy celebrating Christmas, but it's really Drax and Mantis who steal the show. I was very happy that they do get more to do. Dave Bautista is very fun as Drax. Palm Clemative is amazing as Mantis, and she is absolutely gorgeous and absolutely adorable in the role. I thought they really stole the show. You had Kevin Bacon in here. I thought he was pretty good. It's nice to see him in the Marvel project. His heart was in the right place. Definitely heartfelt. I like some of the ideas here in this. I, Baby Groot is still awesome. Rocket Raccoon, not in as much, but he was cool. Star Lord, I like the fact that he and the character of. Uh, Mance's are siblings. I really like that. That was a nice twist. Karen Gillan as Nebula. She's still great. I love Karen Gillan. Even outside of Cinematic Universe. She was good here for what she had to do. 
you definitely miss Gamora, which is not their fault, but we will be seeing Gamora again in the final chapter of the Gar James Gunn's Guardians trilogy. And whoever is going to be the, a new army of Guardians of the Galaxy, you got a lot to live up to. Because if you can be just as awesome as these guys, you you're, then you won't have to worry about the baggage. But anything is will be better than whatever the hell the Eternals are supposed to be. But the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, I really enjoyed this. Number nine, I'm gonna get some shit for this. And that is, of course, Teen Titans Go and DC Superheroes Mayhem in the Multiverse. I went into this pretty harsh because I hate the Teen Titans Go movie, but I am a fan of the DC Superhero Girls movie. So seeing this had me worried but I wanted to give this to Curiosity, and I wanted to be as optimistic as I could be on it. And honestly, this wasn't that bad. I quite enjoyed this. It's not the greatest thing ever made, but I thought the movie did its job and what it was supposed to do for an animated DC film. I was really surprised with this. This definitely gave me as much as I wanted. Is nice pure expectations. I like seeing DC superhero girls like Bumblebee and Wonder Woman and Supergirl, which hopefully that Legion of Superheroes movie with Meg Donnelly doesn't really upset me as much. Um, the performances I thought were great. I thought the characters were awesome. I thought the emotional heart was there in terms of the superhero girls. I still hate the Teen Titans go that's still my only issue that will always be my issue with this i still also really can't stand some of the animation design for the scene titans but it was a nice one i didn't hate it as much as i was expecting to is not dc's finest hour in terms of animation but with the dc superhero girls they made this watchable so they earned that respect in my book. Coming to number eight, more DC awesomeness. Woo! This DC, honestly, they had a better year than Marvel. I'll just say that. DC's League of Super Pets. From the marketing and from the idea, I said this is going to be a stupid ass idea. You're basically trying to do Into the Spider Verse, except in the way of puppies. And for the longest time, a friend of mine, John Avenger, was saying, you guys watch the movie. It's not as bad as you think. But I just said, no, this is exactly as bad as I think. The trailers didn't impress me. I didn't really like the idea. I thought it was stupid. And I thought this was just going to be an unfunny piece of crap. But there was a lot more heart in it than I was expecting. And I would like to see more of what they're going to do with this. Because they do want to do more of this. The Super Pets really surprised me. You had Kevin Hart in here as one of the Super Pets. The Rock, of course. You got people like Olivia Wilde, John Krasinski. You have Davi Diggs, Dashka Palano. As I hope I, didn't, I said her name right. Vanessa Bayer, I thought was really good. The animation style was really good. I liked some of the characters here. Diego Luna, he was fine here. He was alright. And I did like one line of dialogue which made me very happy when Kevin Hart says, Why are dogs our guy's best friend? I really liked that line. That was a pretty interesting line. Issues, there are some jokes that doesn't work. I don't really care for Kate McKinnon as the villain. Nothing against Kate McKinnon, I just don't think she is the strongest villain, and I don't really think, and to me, she's not really that much of a character. My own. Let me pretend I care. Okay, I'm done. You could have easily taken her out, and the voice of Wonder Woman, Jamila Jamil, she does the best she can, but... 
I would prefer someone like Gal Gadot or Adrian Palicki or something. But Jamila does the best she can to make her interpretation look sexy. Nat, I think everything else here is really strong. And it is an entertaining little adventure. That I had a lot more fun than what I thought I was going to. Number seven is going to be Samaritan. This is a Sylvester Stallone of a movie. This was an Amazon Prime movie with Sylvester Stallone and from the director Overlord. It wasn't the most outstanding. It wasn't the. This was a movie with Sylvester Stallone. From the director of Overlord. And while this wasn't the most outstanding movie out there. I thought it was a pretty interesting little side movie. In the ever growing superhero genre. I thought it was very fun. It had its good moments. It has positives. I liked some of the action. The cinematography was really good. Stallone was good at playing a aging villain. Uh, superhero. Not villain. Javon Walton from Euphoria, he was good here. I thought he did fine for what he had to do. A little annoying at times, but I thought he did good in the role that was required for him. I also really liked the setting of it. And I like how small scale it was. It shows that not everything has to be so big and grand. And when we have stuff like the MCU or the DC... EU, the original era and this new era, things are much more massive. But I definitely enjoyed Samaritan. It was something different. It was something interesting. And I didn't mind what they did here. It's not the greatest thing ever, but it is entertaining. The villain was kind of weak. I do wish this was a little rated R because the PG-13 does hold it back. But, this was a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. That leads us into the top six. And in number six is going to be Black Panther Wakanda Forever. This was a heavy movie to watch. And this was a really heavy and heartbreaking and emotional movie to watch. I do have reviews for some of these comic book movies up on my channel in my 2022 playlist. But Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I was looking forward to it when Chadwick Boseman was alive. But after he passed away, I got very worried what they were going to do, how they were going to do a Black Panther movie without your main star. And it was not an easy task, but I think they did the best job they possibly could. Is the movie 2 hours and 41 minutes too long? It's definitely... 10 to 20 minutes too long. You could have easily cut out a few moments of draggy pacing. Even though I understand why Martin Freeman and the, his whole subplot is there. Definitely could have used some trimming. Definitely a little bit too much subtitles as someone who does like foreign films in different languages. Definitely do miss Chadwick Boseman here. His presence is severely missed. Severely. And what they do with Queen Ramona, I wasn't really a fan of that either. I understand why you have to do that, but when it comes to Shuri in this movie, she's already lost everything, so that was a little bit too on the nose a little bit, but it still made his emotional impact. I thought Letitia Wright and Angela Bassett really carried this movie. Namor was a fantastic villain. I thought it was really good. Not one of my favorites, but he's definitely in the conversation for probably my top 10 or top 15. I also really love the underwater cinematography, which is crazy because I just saw another movie involving underwater in the case of Avatar, but I'll talk about that later. I definitely really love the costume design and cinematography and just the way they pay tribute to Chadwick Boseman. It's beautiful, it's poignant, it's emotionally satisfying, and I thought it was a good way to end Phase 4, despite so many frustrations in there. But there's been enough good there, which I will get to two more things that I definitely enjoy there. 
And while I am not a fan of Iron Heart and I don't look forward to her TV show, I thought the performance of Dominique Thorne was fine. I just can't stand Iron Heart in this movie. I don't like her. I don't. She's just female Iron Man to me. Unless there's anything different to her that you guys want to point out, she's just female Iron Man. There's, she's there, but she has no reason to be in this. Bad choice of words for a liar. But Wakanda Forever was an excellent sequel. I don't think they should do a third one unless you have a crossover with someone, but if you do right, I do think you could do a third one with Shuri as the new Black Panther. It doesn't bother me that they didn't recast T'Challa. I'm fine with the decision because we need some time before you could recast T'Challa. Maybe with with Prince T'Challa in the future as such. You guys have already seen the movie, so. But it was a good movie to close out on Phase 4. Number 5 is going to be Werewolf by Night. I loved this. This was awesome. Marvel taking their first steps into doing more supernatural horror vibes. And it's only 60 minutes long and... I really love this. I love the black and white Universal Monsters feel of it. It definitely gives you that feeling of the Universal Monsters. I thought that was very genuine, very ambitious. I love the black and white white in here. Not a lot of CGI. There's great practical effects here. And just the story, it feels self-contained in this big larger than life universe I definitely very much enjoyed that part of this that really won me over and I was very happy to have seen all of that in a MCU movie with supernatural horror vibes werewolf by night I think the main character is very awesome I want to see more of what they do in going forward maybe with the midnight suns Elsa Bloodstone, Laura Donnelly, she was very good. Man Thing was awesome. I really quite enjoyed a lot of what this had to offer. The cinematography was good. Michael Giacchino's score and his directing for his debut was damn solid. I was I just really enjoyed this. It could have been a little I do wish this was feature length. But I'm curious to see how this is going to play into the MCU, especially with the supernatural horror vibe tone of the MCU. So, this was really good. Number five, Werewolf by Night. Number four, technically this is not a comic book movie, but I want to put it on here anyway. Sonic the Hedgehog Part 2. I really loved the first Sonic. The first Sonic had no reason to be as great as it was. I thought the sequel was even better and is my favorite of the two so far. It antsies up more on the Sonic action and the character lore and the growth of Sonic the Hedgehog as a character. Ben Schwartz is the perfect Sonic for a live action film. He's funny. He's very hilarious. I liked a lot of his character stuff. He really is great in this. And he was also very good in the... DC League of Super Pets. So it basically been his year, kind of. She, I mean, he was really good at her. He did a lot of fun. Jim Carrey, whether he's decided to retire or not, if this is his last appearance, which he has not confirmed his retirement, but if it is, what a great way to go out is Dr. Eggman. He's just as funny. Even more over the top. This is classic Carrie at his best. And I love him in this. It's very colorful. Very bright. A lot of crazy action. A lot of fun. Heartfelt moments too. Especially with Sonic and Tails. And then later with those two and Knuckles. Idris Elba as Knuckles I thought was great. He definitely understands the character. I do like the tone that he has at the end of the movie. Which is to be expected. The designs of the three furry friends was great. And Colleen Oshnagasi is Tails. Great, great voice acting from her. She was great. 
I definitely can't wait to see where things are going to go when it comes to Shadow the Hedgehog and Amy Rose in the third movie in 2024. Action was great. Some great comedic timing was great. I, I thought the human characters were once again pretty good. James Morrison, Tika Sumter, and Natasha Rothwell. You have some more more in there. Lead, Mad Jube. The wedding subplot does eat up most of this movie's runtime, and there is a 10 minute de sequence with Sonic and Tails that it does take a while to go to, go to the next scene. And you could have trimmed the wedding subplot just a little bit, but I still thought Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was excellent, and it was amazing. And I can't wait for Sonic 3 and more of the Sonic world. In third place is going to be Catwoman Hunted. I love this. This is my favorite animated DC film of this year. Now, I did enjoy some of the other ones, but this gave me everything I wanted. It shows that if they did the Catwoman movie stand alone somewhere in live action again, this is what it would be like. Elizabeth Gillies has the sexiest Catwoman voice besides Michelle Pfeiffer and Anne Hathaway. I thought she was very good and very well casted for the role. If they ever do Catwoman in the new era of DCEU, Elizabeth Gillies would be my top choice for Catwoman if they ever did Gotham City Sirens. I thought Stephanie Beatrice is Batwoman. Despite not liking the version of Batwoman you have, I thought she did fine. There's a lot of different characters here, like Black Mass and such here. Some of the characters get a little underused. I will. Some actors get a little underused, and it is far too short. I will agree with that. But I really like the Japanese anime style. The animation was very good. The Catwoman action was good. The banter between her and Batwoman was fun. And I just overall enjoyed myself. And I would love to see Elizabeth Gillies do more superhero-like stuff like this. But she is a perfect voiceover for Catwoman. In terms of the DC animated universe stuff. And she really knocked out of the part. I can't wait to watch this again. One day in the future. I definitely really enjoy Catwoman hunting. But this is not the only movie with her in it. In the runner-up, you no one thought this was going to be good with the actor in it, mostly, but The Batman. This is my copy from Nick A.V. Movies of Impulse. I know there are some people who did not care for this movie, and I understand some of the criticism held at it. I understand some of the issues some people will have. Yes, we, this, we don't see Bruce Wayne in his fullest form. Yes, the movie is way too fucking long. At 2 hours and 56 minutes, you could have trimmed down at least some of the scenes with the Penguin Lounge. Or cut them out entirely aside from maybe one or two. And yes, the movie definitely is more scarier. And it is a detective noir. But everything about this movie was great. Robert Pattinson was amazing here. I've always liked Robert Pattinson as an actor, even when he was in Twilight, which was not his fault. Paul Dano was a great villain, even though I wish he was in the movie a little bit more. Zoe Kravitz was great. I liked Peter Sarsgaard. I liked Andy Serkis here. Jeffrey Wright was good. Wanted a little bit more Penguin, but we're going to get his show. Cinematography wise and the production design is good. I like the fact that this is a detective noir story on Halloween with the Riddler and Batman. Even though we've seen those characters before, it's nice to see them here. And you could have done without the one scene with the Joker. I know you have to do that eventually. But I would love to see some villains we haven't seen, like. Redemption for Poison Ivy, some redemption for Mr. Freeze, they definitely do need it. Other villains like Clayface and such, I would like to see what Matt Reeves is going to do there. I definitely really love this. It's not my favorite Batman movie, that still goes to the Dark Knight, but I'm looking forward to seeing what more of the Matt Reeves era of the Batman is going to be like. And I can't wait to see... What things goes in the two Batman sequels. 
and Robert Passing, you did good, man. All those, even those couldn't top my number one best comic book movie of the year. Yes, I've been championing this movie all fucking year. Yes, I've talked ad nauseum about this movie. Yes, I've defended this movie for most of its criticisms. I will continue to defend it. Yes, I've seen this movie four times. Twice when it came out, once on Disney Plus, and once with the uh, little digital code, and now I have the 4K, so I can see as many times as I want. This was my most anticipated movie of 2022, and my most anticipated MCU project. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yes, I hear all the constant criticisms. Yes, there are moments where I get heavily frustrated with Wanda because she refuses to listen sometimes. Yes, the movie could have been 10 to 20 minutes longer. Yes, America Chavez is a plot device. Yes, the Illuminati cameos aren't as grand as they could have been. Yes, you need a little more multiverse hopping. And I do agree with all those criticisms. But there is still a lot of great things I love about this movie, even with my fourth watch. Benedict Cumberbatch steals this entire movie. He is great. Despite the fact that I wanted just a little bit more character growth with him, this is why I say you could have added at least an extra 10 to 15 minutes to make it at least 149 minutes long, the same length as Avengers Infinity War. Um... He was great here. Rachel McAdams, I thought she was really good as Dr. Christine Palmer. Sam Raimi's the... Uh, cinematography. I love the direction of what they give with Sam Raimi. It does have your MCU style type of movie. But you do, when it goes full on Sam Raimi, it is full on Sam Raimi. And I love every fucking minute of it yes and the cinematography was really good i thought Salchito gomez was good denny elfman's music was good the third act is chaotic zombie strange that is something i didn't think i need to see but i cannot talk about this and not talk about my girl wanda which i think a lot of the criticism towards this character is unjustified she has every reason for doing what she's doing as an act of a mother's love. Yes, she held a town hostage. Yes, she had the dark hole. Yes, she killed people in but through using powers of dream walks. But I'm not gonna hate the character just because everyone else does. Elizabeth Olsen, she was great here. This will be my best movie of 2022. It has been since May. No other movie, not even Top Gun Maverick, not even Sonic, not even Everything Everywhere All at Once could top it. I know this movie has its detractors, but there is a lot of things I really love her. And when it comes to the Wanda Maximoff thing, when she has had to blow a hole through the head of the man she loves, when she's had to see her own brother die, when she's lost her parents, when she can't have the life that she wants, not to mention her being controlled by the dark hole, and with her just being an emotional grieving wreck. What the fuck did you think was gonna happen by the end of WandaVision? Of course, she's not going to easily heal. Yes, I do think Wanda needs to be held accountable for holding a Westview hostage, but jail is not the answer, people. Call shut up with that. I do love this movie. This will be my best of the year when I do that. I still have to do a few more 2022 catch up. And this is my favorite superhero movie of 2022. Well, that's going to do it for the video that you just watched. I will have my channel here. So you would like to see anything here. Click the channel icon, subscribe for more. I will also leave a video and maybe a playlist here. So in case you want to see what I'm about. As always, stay up assassinist, join the assassinist, and you guys keep it cool.